Before modern medicine, people living with HIV AIDS relied on nutrition and local herbs as a way to prolong life and cope with symptoms or opportunistic infections. Many were shunned by the community from the physical symptoms they suffered from the disease. We had an uncle, a prominent businessman. Um, he had a number of women somewhere in a room, somewhere in Kampala. So when he contracted the disease, uh, by then people would live in denial. They would not want to believe uh, that they are carrying the virus. Um, he would refuse medical attention. <coughs> started deteriorating. You know he was so fat. Then later on he started on, he would even add like two, three sides on his body for people to believe he's still okay. Even trousers will be adding. So that was until he died. HIV AIDS stigma and discrimination did not only affect those living with the disease, but also extended to their family members and caretakers. This encouraged secrecy in families, even during funerals. Many partners and children who were left behind by HIV positive family members were often in the dark about their own status. I was uh, now still uh, a youth, continued with my studies. When I, I reached uh, a level of uh, getting into a relationship with my late husband. I, I didn't know that we really had to take an HIV test first, yet we were in the condom campaign during that time of 1990 to 1992 by Uganda Red Cross and the campaign was done by the youth. But at that time speaking about a condom still was a challenge. I remember they would look at us as Spoiled girls. Your brother died. He died of HIV. But the wife has to be inherited. And now, without knowing whether the wife is still carrying the infection or not, now we can say this conduct couple. But this was not known. I delivered the baby boy. I knew that boy was positive. Straight away. And I could not even take him for a test. I refused. I said, mm -mm. let him stay like that. Not until he finished his fall. They took him here, he was tested and found negative. In the late 90s, over one million orphans had lost their parents to HIV AIDS. Many moved between relatives who sometimes considered them a burden, especially if they too had been infected with the virus. To promote change in care and adherence to ARVs, government and private organizations changed their communication about the possibility of living a healthy life despite being HIV AIDS positive. It was counseling before to live positively, you know, wait to die. And now it is, you know, uh, start your treatment, adhere to your treatment. That's what came in. The counseling improved very well. We, people living with AIDS, were also able to be incorporated in the counseling training. So we were able to give not only real counseling, but also peer-to-peer -peer counseling. So that's how slowly we came out of that feeling of too much discrimination and stigma. In fact, I think I'm confident to say that the kind of counseling we got those days was much better than what a newly diagnosed patient would get right now. For more interesting stories and artifacts, go to www.historyofhiv.ug. To participate in project research, free HIV counseling and testing, contact 0751-051-866 or 0779-452-176.